down. And it's encrypted. It bounces around for a very long period of time, and then it comes out. And, th and you know, the people who who are trying to tr figure out who you are, it the name on that uh, the name on that internet packet that comes out is the name of the Tor net network, not your name, not your IP address. However, the problem with that is there's all there's all this bouncing going on, right? So therefore, if you ever use Tor, which I do recommend you try, uh, particularly doing something very dodgy and you want to hide yourself, um, you know, it is slow. So you can't do anything fast. You, people really they get really irritated with it. And previously, then, if you use Tor, you also have this problem where it only hides you on one level. It hides you on the level of your IP address, on the protocol level, the bytes level. It doesn't hide you on the level of, if you're on Tor and you log into your Gmail account or your Twitter account, it doesn't all, you just gave yourself away, right? Because obviously it's you again. So you can hide where you are, your physical location with Tor, but you can't hide your, um, who you are very well. Who you are in the web is done via cookies. So cookies are these little bits of code that I was talking about earlier that websites can send back to you to, to identify you. Now these cookies can do many things. In fact, the, the main business model of the web actually is sending these cookies to your computer then tracking you, okay? So you have these massive advertising networks that can track you within milliseconds of you getting on the web. Okay, as soon as you get on, the cookie communicates back to its mothership, which is usually someone you don't know about. All these ad networks are very mysterious, but often people you know about, like Google and Facebook, so that when you press that like button, a little message goes back to the mothership. Oh, he likes this. And then Facebook says, oh, we can share this with someone else. Um, and this cookies identify who you are. So essentially, that's what happens when, if you want to sort of clear those out, you have to go to your web browser. Sorry, I don't have a, I could show you how to do this, but you could go and go try to clear it out by going to cat tools histories clear out but then we're going to incognito mode often tends to eliminate these cookies but there's even more and more sophisticated ways to kind of keep them on your computer it's sort of an arms race between the advertising networks and the people who are trying to uh, defend your identity and your freedom on the web and the last thing with the certificate authorities is that you can check you do have, there's work um and the cookies so the problem with cookies is when you disable the cookies, you can't use any of your services anymore. You can't use Gmail very effectively. You can't use Google Maps. So in order to use something like Google Maps, what you can do is you can make a pool of cookies and share them with other people. That's called, there's a very nice software called, software called Google Sharing, which I recommend. And Google Sharing allows you to sort of share these cookies with your neighbors and friends. <laughs> and then so, you, so you're basically taking them in and out and you're sharing them. It's, it's quite useful. Um, at, this, at the same point, there's now work going on the web consortium for trying to do something called do not track, where you can tell websites not to track you and we're trying to figure out how to enforce that, which is very tricky. But overall, the, the, the thing, that, and as regards to the certificate issue, the way to fix that is you need to be able to determine trust yourself and not rely on some sort of third party to rely on trust. Same with domain. domain.